Hello and welcome to this course on C programming. In this session, we will have a look into why one should learn C and what are the advantages of learning C program. C is one of the oldest programming languages developed in 1972. C programs are very much popular choice of programming in different domains such as consumer electronics, automotive, embedded systems, safety critical systems, and many other domains. The main advantage of a C program is the runtime of a C program is much faster when compared to any modern day programming languages. Also, most of the operating system kernels are developed in C. For example, the Linux operating system is developed in C. Also, the C programs helps one in understanding the basics of the computer theory and also many of the modern day languages have been borrowed or influenced by C program. For example, Java, Python, JavaScript, Ruby, all these modern day languages are influenced by C. Hence, understanding the basic of C will boost up in learning the other modern languages also. Hello and welcome. In this short session, we will see what are the prerequisites before we start the C programming. So let's see what is a memory in a computer. A memory is basically a storage space which will store the data and the memory is usually a hardware and it stores ones and zeros. A data can be represented in the computer by one or a zero. So any data we take will finally be represented in ones and zeros combination. So a unique combinations of one and zero together forms a data. A bit is nothing but a least small part of memory which can store either a one or a zero. Four bit together is one nibble and eight bit together is called as one byte and byte is most commonly used terminology. So byte and bit are most commonly used terminologies. Also let's see what is a C program. A C program is a general purpose language and it is a structured language. We will see what is a structured language during the course. What is a compilation? A compilation is a process in which we are translating the high level language, for example, C, C++, Python, Java to low level language such as assembly code, machine code, etc. So this process creates an executable code and the executable code is the one which finally runs on the computer system. And the program which performs the compilation is called as a compiler. Hence, in this course, as we are discussing C programming, a C compiler is used to compile the C program. Hello and welcome. In this video session, we will write our first simple C program in the Linux platform. As a note, before writing our first C program, a file with .c extension is the source file and a file with .h extension is the header file. And we need a compiler to compile our C program. In Linux platform, we have GCC, that is GNU compiler collection, which is pre-installed and is an open source compiler collection. Now, let us open the terminal and check for the GCC compiler. GCC space minus V will give the version of the installed GCC. So here we can see that the GCC compiler is installed and we have the version as mentioned here. This also means that the GCC is installed in our system. In case the GCC is not installed, we need to install the GCC. Now let us let us go to a folder of our choice 
and write our first C program. Now, in order to save the time, we have written a simple C program already and we are going to see the same. Now, if you see here, this is the name of the source file and it has a .c extension. Here, the first line that is present here is a comment. So, this is used to comment the code and the comment will not be compiled and is used for instruction purpose for the user. The hash include stdio.h is the header file that needs to be included for standard input and output like the printf. We will discuss in details regarding the hash includes. The program begins with main function and the lines between open and closed parenthesis is called as the body of the function. Here we are displaying the required string onto the screen. Now let us compile this program. In order to compile the program, we have to use the GCC. The command uses GCC space name of the source file that we have created hyphen O and name of the executable that we wish to create. Now, if you see, we have the source file welcome.c and the executable file created. Now, it's time to execute the program that we have compiled. In order to execute the program, we have to type the name of the executable. In our case, welcome is the name of the executable and after typing the name of the executable file, we have to press the enter key. Here we can see that welcome to C. This, this is the string output that we had written in our program. Let's go back to the program. If you see here, welcome to C was the string that we wanted to display onto the screen. So we can also see that this is the output that we are getting. Now we have successfully written our first simple C program. In the next video sessions, we will study more on the next concepts of C program. Thank you. Hello and welcome. In this video session, we will discuss the compilation process involved in C program. The source code contains the .c file and the .c file includes the required header file. For example, let us see a sample C program file. This is a sample C program which is used to find the area of a circle. And in this program, we have included the required header file. And as a note, we have used a macro here. So the hash defined is called as a macro and pi has a value 3.14. So pi is a macro with value 3.14. We will discuss about macros at later point. Now let us analyze the compilation process. The different steps involved during the compilation is pre-processing, assembling, compilation, linking, and then loading. Let us discuss each of the steps in detail. So the first step is the pre-processing. The preprocessor searches for the required header file and replaces the header file contains in the source code and then it searches for the macros and replaces the macros by its value. The output of a preprocess file is .i. Now let us see it in an example. So in order to compile this program, we use GCC compilers and if we need the intermediate files as the output, we have to specify this option. So hyphen save hyphen tempest is used to generate all the intermediate files during the compilation. So now let us compile this program. 
now we have compiled the program enabling the intermediate files so by specifying hyphen save hyphen tempest we are listing all the intermediate files that is generated during the compilation process and this is the name of the source code and this is the name of the output file that is being generated now let's see the different files generated so we have the dot i file which is nothing but the preprocessed file let's open the preprocessed file if you see here the preprocessed file the stdio.h header file is been replaced by the required contents and then finally the macro is been replaced by the value if we have a look here stdio.h file is been replaced by the contents of stdio.h itself and then finally as a second step during preprocessing it searches for all the macros so in this case we have y and this has been replaced by the value 3.14 so we can note that here the pi is been replaced by the value 3.14 now the next step is the assembler the assembler will now convert the preprocessed file to assembly language that is specific to the given processor or the hardware and the output file generated has extension .s so now let's see the file we have a assembly we have a assembler for assembly intermediate file here now let's open the output of a assembly generated file if you note here this is the assembly language of equivalent to the source code what we have so this source code is been converted to the required assembly file and this assembly language is specific to the given hardware now the next step is the compilation itself the compiler will now convert the assembly code to relocatable object code which is the machine level code so if you see here there are different source codes available so each source code is preprocessed and the preprocessed file is given as a input to the assembler and the assembler generates the assembly language of each source code and finally the co compiler compiles the given assembly code and converts it into the object code so now the compiled code has extension .o and as we have mentioned the .o file is a machine code and it is not readable by human format even if you open this file we we will not be able to follow the contents of this as it is a machine code so later we have the compilation process done and next the step is involved is a linking process the linking will link all the object codes together with the required library and create a executable file so if we see here all the different object codes that is been generated by the compiler will be linked using the library and finally it will create an executable file so in this case in this case we have the executable file simple prog dot c sim simple prog and the final step involved is the loading so loader will basically load the given executable file into the required memory location so when we run this file the loader comes in picture and it loads this executable file in the memory and it executes it so these are the different steps involved in the build process namely the preprocessing the assembling the compilation the the linking and finally the loading thank you hello and welcome 
in this session we will discuss the basic concepts of c like variables expressions functions and array let us begin our discussion by studying about variables in computer system all the programs are stored in a memory and in order to identify memory locations we use variables so variables are a unique name given to identify memory location for example int index equal to 10 char buffer equal to y here index and buffer are variables which refer to unique section of memory and index stores value 10 and buff stores ascii equivalent value of y int and char shown above are called as data types these data types direct the c compiler that int will store only integers and character char will store only the characters we will see more on the data types in our upcoming videos now we will write a simple program related to variables here this is a simple program which are related to var variables here we include the required header files which is the stdio.h the stdio.h is used to perform the input and output operations and are used by the printf function here we use the variable called as index and the data type of the variable index is int and it stores an initial value of 100 now we, we proceed by printing the value of the index and in order to print the strings in c we use printf and uh, and every line in c terminates with a semicolon here the the string that we mention inside the printf will be displayed on the screen backslash n is a new line character and directs the compiler to display the output in in the new line and here the value of index is percentage d this percentage d is the format specifier we will discuss on the format specifiers later in in the later video sessions so here value of index is this is replaced by the value present in the index variable hence we can we can see this after execution the value of index will be printed as 100 now we change the value of index by 1000 and now the print the value of the index the new value of the index is this percentage d will be replaced by the value present in the index so here the new value should be 1000 now let us compile this program and see the output now to compile the program we have to use gcc name name of the source file hyphen o and name of the executable here we are giving the name of the executable as var now let's run the executable after running the, running the executable we can see this we can see the first line value of index is 100 so this is coming from this printf so printf is used to display the text as the output and here we can see value of index is percentage d this percentage d will be replaced by the value of the index so here we can see value of index is 100 then next we have changed the value of index equal to 1000 and we are printing the same using the next printf so 
back slash in will print the output in the next line. So after this line, it goes to the new line and prints the new string and new value of the index is 1000. Here, since we have changed the value of the index as 1000, we have printed the value of index as 1000. So here, index is a variable of type int. Int is a data type. And this is a simple program in which we have written a program to demonstrate the variable concept. Hello and welcome to this video session. We will discuss the basic overview of function. We have a dedicated video session later in which we discuss the functions in depth. This session only describes the basic overview of the function. C is a procedural language. This means the execution of program follows a particular order and functions plays an important role in order of execution. The function is a block of codes which together performs a specific task. The function body is written within the open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis. The function helps in reusing the code. For example, let us consider a program in which we perform addition of two numbers frequently. In this case, we can write a function to add two numbers and this function can be called from anywhere in the program. Hence, functions helps in reducing the program size. By writing a function, we can also achieve the model, modularization of a C program. Modules can be considered, considered as a set of related functions which together perform a bigger specific task. In the next video session, let us write a C program related to functions. Hello and welcome. In this video session, we will learn how to write function in C by looking into examples. This is a sample program to demonstrate basic usage of functions in C. As a note, in later video sessions, we have dedicated session to discuss functions in depth. In this program, we have written functions to perform sum of two numbers and difference of two numbers. Now, let us begin by explanation of the program. The stdio.h is a header file that needs to be included to perform any standard and standard input and output. This is the prototype of the function. We will discuss this later. So, the execution of a C program begins from main. So, main is also a function and in this case, it takes void as void that means it does not take any parameter as input and returns nothing. So void in C means it takes as no parameter as input and returns nothing. So here we have defined var1 as an integer and var2 as an integer and sum and if also are the integers and var1 stores a value 10, var2 stores a value 20 and sum and diff initially stores a value 0. Now, when sum of is executed, the execution jumps to the place where the sum of has been defined. So, in this case, the sum of has been defined here. So, as soon as the execution enters to this line, the sum of has been called and the values of var1 and var2 are, are being passed on to the variables present in this function. So, the var1 and var2, which is the value 10 and 20 are passed to these variables and the execution starts from this line. Now, var1 plus var2 is being summed up and the value 10 plus 20 that is 30 is being returned and the return 
which is 30 is also an integer and this refers to the data type of the returning value so we will discuss about the data types later so this refers to the returning data type and the return value is been stored in the variable called as sum so now sum stores the value 30 and the same is printed using the printf and similarly when the execution reached reaches this line the diff is called so diff is a function and it's been defined here so whenever diff is called the execution jumps where to the point where the function is been defined and the values present in var2 and var1 are being passed on to this variables var2 and var1 and the execution begins the execution starts from this the body of the function and here var1 modulus var2 that is the difference of the variables is been calculated and it's been returned so in, in our case the difference of 10 and 20 which is nothing but 10 is been returned and the return data type is also an integer and this value is been stored in the variable called as diff and the same thing is being printed using the printf function now let us compile this program and see the output in order to compile the program we use gcc gcc followed by name of the file that we have written followed by minus o and the name of the executable that we wish now let us execute the program if you see here sum of 10 and 20 is 30 and diff of 10 and 20 is 10 so these prints are coming from this printf and this printf statement so here sum of this percentage d will be replaced by the value present in var1 and the second percentage d will be replaced by the value present in var2 and the third percentage d will be replaced by the value present in sum so this gives the output sum of 10 and 20 is 30 sum of 10 and 20 is 30 similarly we get the output diff of 10 and 20 is 10 diff of 10 and 20 is 10 so in this example we have demonstrated how to use the function we will be going through the function calls in depth later in the video sessions so here we can see this whenever we call sum of it jumps to the place where the function is being defined and it performs the action and return back to the point from where the function is being called and it and the execution continues from that point so this function the main advantages of writing the function is it increases the modularity and the also it reduces the number of lines of code by reusing the code so in this case instead of call instead of performing sum of every time in this program we have defined a place in which the sum of is being calculated and it gives the sum of the two variables hello and welcome in this video session we will see some more examples of functions before going to the function double slash is used as a single line comment and this symbol is used as a multi line comment so comments are nothing but the note that is written by the programmers and they are only for the understanding of the programmer and are not compiled by any comp by C compilers so we begin the program by including stdio.h this is the header file that is required to perform standard input and output operations and the printf function uses the stdio.h a function has two parts that is one is the declaration and the other is the definition 
so a declaration is informing the compiler what are the properties of the function what is the name of the function what are the parameter that it takes for example in this case the name of the function is area and it takes two parameter that is length and breadth and both are of type data type integer and integer and this function it returns an integer so this is called as the declaration and definition this is the definition where the actual execution of the function or the body of the function consists so now this is also the definition of the function so this contains the instructions that is being executed inside the function whereas test func1 is a declaration informing the compiler that this is the name of the function and it takes no parameter as input and returns no parameter as output now the execution of a program in c begins from main function so main is also a function and in this case the main does not take any parameter so we have kept it as void and it returns no parameter so the return type data type is also void here so here we have three variables x1 y1 and ret here x1 we have not defined any value for x1 and y1 hence there will be an garbage value garbage value is nothing but the unpredictable value that is stored by default in this case ret equal to 0 so the value of ret will be 0 initially now the x1 value is being inputted so the print of uh, outputs enter x1 value and this value that the user enters from the key keypad is being recorded by the scanf function so the scanf function waits until the user enters a value from the keyboard and enters key <coughs> enter key so now the program collects x1 value and y1 value from the user and stores it in x1 and y1 so we will discuss on the ampersand feature later when we discuss about the pointers after collecting the value x1 y1 from the user this line is executed here area of square is percentage d so this is a format specifier this means this will be replaced by the value that is present in this function so when this function is present the execution jumps to the place where the function is defined so in this case the function is defined here and the value of x1 and y1 is passed on to the length and breadth so x1 holds the value that user enters and the same value is passed on here in length variable and value of y1 is present in breadth variable now when the execution comes here it executes the length value into breadth value and returns so for example if the user has entered 2 and 3 then 2 into 3 6 will be returned and this area will be replaced by the value 6 and the same will be printed here the area of square is 6 now in next function we are calling test func1 so this is a function where it jumps to the test1 function so the definition of test1 function is here so as soon as test func1 is being called it jumps to the place where it is defined and here we are internally calling the area function so this function calls jumps to this test1 function and inside test1 function we have one more function called as area and here we have predefined value 10 comma 5 
so this area function will be replaced by the value 10 into 50 that is nothing but this value and area underscore temp will now hold the value 50 and the printf present here will be executed and the same thing the value of area underscore temp will be printed on to the screen next this function will be called test func2 so if you note here test func1 does not have any return value so this test func1 does not return any data type now test func2 has a return value test func2 has a return value of type integer and and this value that is being returned is collected in the variable called as ret and the data type of ret should also be e equal to integer so now when test func2 gets called it jumps to this location and this internally again calls area and in this case area area function will be replaced by the value 10 into 6 that is 60 and area temp will have 60 as the value area calculated in test func 2 is area temp so this will be replaced by 60 and the same value 60 will be returned to the calling function so now this is the calling function and this is the called function now 60 will be replaced here and ret now holds the value 60 and printf prints the value that is present in ret that is nothing but 60 now let's compile this program and see the output in order to compile the program we use gcc so gcc followed by the name of the file followed by minus o and the name of the executable so now func is the name of the output file that has been generated now let's run this executable file enter x1 value so this enter x1 value is coming from this printf and now scanf is being executed in the background and it is waiting for the user to enter some value now let's say the user enters value 2 and presses enter key as soon as the user presses enter key the value is stored in x1 so now in our case <clears throat> the value 2 is being stored in x1 and next similarly it asks us the it asks the user to enter y1 value so enter y1 value and let's say the user enters 3 and presses enter key so now the y1 holds the value 3 that has been entered from the user so now if you see here area of square is percentage d this will be replaced by this value that is 2 into 3 is 6 so area of square is 6 next next it executes this test func 1 so when it executes test func 1 it jumps to the location where test func 1 is present and it and it, it executes this function and before executing this function this function internally calls the area function and this area function has a definition here so te test func 1 jumps to this location and from here area function is called so from uh, from here again the execution jumps here and the return value that is 10 into 5 will be returned to the area function and 50 is stored here the same thing is printed in this line the area calculated in test func is 10 into 5 that is 50 now after this it this function returns it returns without any value so again the execution comes to this line here ret equal to test func2 will be called so when test func2 is called 
the execution jumps to this location where test func2 is being defined and here again this function in again calls area function and this will be replaced by 10 into 6 that is 60 that is being calculated here and now area underscore temp has a value 60 and the same will be printed here area calculated in func2 is area calculated in func2 is 60 and an important note is here we are returning the value that is present in area underscore temp so area underscore temp is nothing but an integer and we are returning an integer and this is mentioned here also this is the return data type of test func2 and the test func2 returns value 60 that is stored in this value ret in this variable ret so now ret holds the value 60 and the same will be printed here test func2 return value equal to ret that is nothing but 60 so this line is printed so by this we can see that properly utilizing the functions makes the code to be reused so here in this case this area function is being called from many places and hence this line of code is being utilized so that the rewriting of the area function is avoided also this function writing improves the modularization of the program Hello and welcome. In this video session, let us learn the concept of arrays. Arrays are collection of same data types and identified by same name and stored in a contiguous memory. A contiguous memory is when all the available memory is present in one place without any scattering. In this case, we have defined an array with the name is TUD underscore ID and the array contains four element and each element holds an integer. In the memory it can be represented as, represented as follows. We have STUD underscore ID and it has four elements one, two, three, four and the first element is represented by index zero. So STUD underscore id of 0 represents the first element stud underscore id of 1 represents the second element in the same way stud underscore id of 2 represents the third and stud underscore id of 3 represents the fourth element now let's see when to use arrays so in this example, let's say that we have three variables, three different variables, role number one, role number two, and role number three, and each are of data type integers. So here, instead of creating three different variables, we can have a single variable, role number, and we can have three elements in it, and each element is of type integer. So Role number of 0, role number of 1, and role number of 2 represents the three elements of the variable role number. Hence, role number, uh, role number in this case is an array of three elements, and each element stores integer data type. In, in sessions later, we have dedicated video session which explains more in-depth concepts of arrays such as multi-dimension arrays and different operations pertaining to arrays so we will discuss in the upcoming video sessions hello and welcome in this video we will discuss the data types and write few programs related to data types in previous session we had discussed regarding variables. Variables are used to store different values or data and identify a specific memory location. Each variable 
has a unique data type. So, what is a data type? Let us see data type with example. Here, we have int var1 equal to 10 and float var2 equal to 3.1. Here, int is a data type and float is a data type. The int tells compiler that var1 holds data of type integer whereas float tells the compiler that var2 holds a data of type float. Now let us see the different data types present in C. The basic data types in C are int, char, float and double. Now let us discuss each data type in brief. Let's begin with int data type. The int data type holds integer values and the memory size of int data type varies on the system and the architecture. For example, in some system, the int data type takes two bytes, whereas in other system, the int data type can take up to four bytes. A int data type usually stores both positive and negative numbers and the range of int data type is minus 3 to 7, 6, 8 to plus 3 to 7, 6, 7 in case of 2 byte data type, 2 byte int data type whereas in case of 4 byte int data type this is the value that it can store and we can also specify unsigned int. When we specify unsigned int, then we can store only positive numbers. And by specifying unsigned int for 2 byte, it can store up to 0 to 65535. And similarly, for unsigned int with 4 bytes, it can store up to 0 to the date, the value specified here. So in, in general, signed int for a 2 byte holds this range of value and unsigned int for a 2 byte holds this range of value in the same way. Signed int and unsigned int for 4 byte takes the value specified in the diagram. Now let us see char data type. So char data type is used to hold the character data. Character data usually takes one byte in memory and the value of char data type ranges between minus 128 to plus 127. Now let's see an example of char data type. char ch equal to a. So here we are storing ASCII value of a in CH. So when we look into the memory, the value stored in CH will be the ASCII equivalent of A. So in this case, the ASCII equivalent of A is 97 and hence the value stored in CH is 97. And if we have to specify the ASCII notation, then we have to specify char data type followed by the name of the variable and the character that we need to store. We will see all the different data types in example. The other data types are float and double. Float and double both are used to store real numbers. The float takes 4 bytes in memory whereas the double takes 8 bytes in memory. A float is a single precision value and this is the value it can store in memory whereas a double is a double precision and the value stored in double is specified here. Now let us see the example of these data types. In this program 
we are including the required header file stdio.h and here we have taken the example of four different data types that is int, char, float and double. So here when we specify int then we are telling the compiler that var and var1 holds integer value and we have stored an integer value of 10. Similarly char1 holds an ASCII value and it can store the character value and f1 is a float and it can store single precision floating point values and d1 is a double precision floating point values and now in order to print the values we use a printf and we are printing the values using the format specifiers. These are called as the format specifiers. We will discuss regarding format specifiers later. So now let us compile this code. So now we have compiled the code and we have generated the output file data. Now let's run the output file. If you see here, we have printed the values of the variables. So value of var1 is 10, value of ch1 is a and as an important note, if we want to see the data that is stored in C character in the decimal format, then we have to specify percentage %d. So by specifying percentage %d, the value displayed on the screen would be the integer value and for the same if we specify percentage %c then the ASCII equivalent value will be displayed on the screen. So ch1 holds, ch holds the value 97 and when we display the value 97 using percentage %d the integer value or the decimal value will be displayed and when the same variable is displayed using percentage %c the ASCII value is displayed here that is nothing but a and here we can see value of f1 is as specified and value of d1 is that is specified in our program. So by this we have discussed the four basic data types in C int, char, float and double. There are different derived data type also we will see different derived data types as and when required. Thank you. Hello and welcome. In this video session, we will discuss the memory consumed by each data types in C. As a note, we have a built-in library function called as size of, which will provide the memory details of the particular data type or a variable. It basically returns in units of bytes. Here we are including the required header file stdio.h and we define four basic data types int, char, float and double. Also along with these four basic data types we can specify long and signed or unsigned for integer and character data type. Now let's see how we can find the total memory consumed by each data type. Here we use the format specifier percentage LU and this is the return type of size of and percentage LU refers to long unsigned int. So now let's begin by finding the data type of int here. As we have mentioned in previous session that the size of int depends upon the compiler or the system and the architecture. So since we are running Linux based GCC compile, compiler, let's find the size of int in our case. Similarly, by, by passing the data type to size of, it returns the total byte that is being consumed. Similarly, we 
can specify the size of long unsigned int to get the memory details of long unsigned int data type. In the same way, we have written the size of different data types. Now let's compile this program using GCC and we have successfully compiled the program. Now let's run our program. If you note here, the size of int data type in current running system, that is, we are using a Linux based GCC and the size of int is 4. That means any variable of data type int takes 4 bytes in memory. Also, a long unsigned int data type it takes 8 bytes in memory. So when we specify long along with that int data type, the number of bytes consumed will be twice as that of the int. So int takes 4 whereas long int takes 8 bytes. Same way long signed or unsigned int takes 8 bytes and char data type takes 1 byte which is coming from this line, the output is coming from this line and the char data type in any system always takes one byte and unsigned char also takes one byte in memory. Float data type takes four byte in memory whereas double data type takes eight byte in memory. So we can see that integer is the only data type which is dependent on the system and the architecture and the compi compiler and the other data types are, are fixed size. So we can find the different data size of different data types using the size of operator and by passing the required data type into size of function we can know the memory of each data type. Thank you. Hello and welcome. In this video session, we will discuss regarding format specifiers. Let's see what is a format specifier. A format specifier is used in functions like printf and it indicates the compiler how the variable that is associated with the format specifier should be displayed to the user on screen. For example, Let's say we have a integer variable var1 and it has a value 10. We have seen a similar example before where we use printf to display the value. Here we are using %d and this is called as the format specifier. So when printing the string on the screen, as soon as it sees %d, this will be replaced by the value present in var1. and here, percentage %d is used to display the integer data type. Now, let's see different format specifiers used. So, these are the commonly used format specifier. So, if we have to display an in integer variable, percentage %d is used. And as a note, by default, int is signed always. And if we have a variable unsigned int, then we use a format specifier, percentage %u. Similarly, long int has a format specifier percentage %ld. Long unsigned int has a format specifier percentage %lu. Character has a format specifier percentage %c. Float has percentage %f. Double has percentage %lf. There are diff there are many other format specifiers, I, but we have listed the most commonly used format specifier. Now let's see some examples of format specifier. Here we have written a sample C code with different variables, data, different data type variables and we have int, char, float, double, unsigned int and long int and we have different variab variables and we have assigned some arbitrary values in it. Now we are printing the values of these variables. So let's begin with the var i, which is a int data type. So when displaying a 
data of in data type we specify percentage d so here the value of var i equal to this will be replaced by the value present in var underscore i that is nothing but 200 now let's see the second example the value of var underscore c in ascii equal to percentage c so whenever we specify percentage c the ascii value will be represented will be displayed that is nothing but the string equivalent the or the character equivalent value character equivalent of that value will be displayed when we specify percentage c but when the same var underscore c we display using percentage d then the value that is stored will be displayed in the decimal format so here var underscore c has ascii value z in it so when we say percentage c then we get the character associated with it and when we specify the same var underscore c with percentage d then the ascii equivalent value will be displayed we will see this when we run the example and here var underscore f is a float and we are using percentage f and similarly var underscore d is in double and for double we use percentage lf and percentage u and percentage ld for unsigned int and long int respectively now let us compile this and execute it in order to understand more better so we have the gcc command and now let's compile this so we have generated an output file called as format underscore spec now let's run this if you see here we are getting these prints that we have used the value of var i is nothing but 200 these are the different things we are getting so here whenever we see this format specifiers this will be replaced by the values present here and we can have in the same printer some series of format specifiers and in that case the first format specifier will be replaced by the first variable and second format specifier will be replaced by second variable now let's see the same in example let's say we we can combine different format specifier let's say that we are going to have different format specifiers in one line So here var i we are using percentage d and var underscore f is in float and we have to use percentage f. So here var i underscore var underscore i is the integer value and var f we have to specify here. So now here in this example if you see we are using two different format specifiers in the same printer that is percentage d and percentage f so when the execution happens it sees the first format specifier and replaces this by the first variable that is defined here and the second format specifier will be replaced by the value content of the second variable that is defined here now let's compile this once again and see the see the output we have compiled it successfully and now let's run it. so if you see here this is the last line that we have added the value of var underscore i is 200 and var underscore f is 3.99 this is the same thing we have specified so when we have more than one format specifiers in the printf it consequently searches for the first the first format specifier will be replaced by the first value of the variable and second format specifier will be replaced by the second value of the variable and so on this is the use of format specifiers thank you hello and welcome in this video session let us discuss the concept of constants used in c in one of the previous videos we had discussed 
regarding variables and we have seen that the variables can hold different values during during the execution of the program now let us consider a use a scenario where the value of the variable should not be changed and in order to achieve this we have to declare the variable using constant and as an example here we can see we have a float with a variable name pi and we have assigned a value 3.14 and in case we wish not we wish if we do not have to change the value of pi we have to declare it with the keyword const before the data type once we put this keyword const we cannot further change the value of pi now let us see the same using an example here in this sample program we have an integer variable and we have assigned an value 10 and here we are defining a constant float pi and assigning a value 3.14 also we are printing the value of cost per item and and similarly we are printing the value of pi here now this variable cost per item is of data type int and hence we can change the value of this variable and here we have done the same and we have changed it from 10 to we have to 20 and the same thing is printed here now let's compile this and see the output this is the command used to compile using gcc now we have generated the output file known as const if we run here we can see this this is the integer variable this is the integer variable and its value before was 10 and pi value is 3.14 this is what we have got here and cost per item value after is 20 so we have change the value of cost per item and we are able to successfully display the changed value now let us consider this where we are trying to change the value of pi from 3.14 to 4.14 and and here we have declared float pi as a const type so here we are telling the compiler that pi value is not going to change during the execution of the program but let's consider by mistake a programmer has tried to change the value of that variable now let's see what is the behavior of this program now let's try to compile this program if we compile this program we can see the error here so this error will specify that we are trying to change the value of a variable which is supposed to be a constant this means that we are not supposed to change the value when it is defined as a constant now if we remove this const now we will be able to compile the same this means sorry we have a mistake here so now we are able to compile it when we remove the const and if we put the const here and try to compile we can see this error and it says that we are trying to change the value of a variable which is supposed to be a constant so the bottom line bottom line of this concept of const variables are when we wish not to change the value of a variable during the execution we have to specify using the keyword const thank you hello and welcome in this video session let us discuss the concept of declaration and definition this is one of the commonly used feature in C let's begin our discussion by declaration so there are two types of declaration this is a variable declaration and function declaration the declaration informs the 
compiler the properties of the variables or the functions. So the declaration does not consume any real memory. It is only an indication to the compiler about the properties of the variables or the function. Similarly, in definitions, we have two types of definitions. One is a variable definition and uh, there is a function definition. The variable definition is all about assigning the values of a variable, whereas function definition, it specifies the code part of the function. Now, in order to understand this better, let's see with an example. Now, let's say we have two different files, dec underscore def dot c and globe dot c file. So here, let's open globe dot c file here. And in this globe dot c, we have defined an variable called as global underscore var of type data type int. And in the second file, we are using the same global underscore var. And since it is of type int, we have to specify the same data type here. And we are specifying extern. And this is called as the variable declaration here. This is a global variable. We will see the concept of global variable later. But at this point, let's say this variable is accessible throughout this file. And in order to inform that this is a global variable, we are using extend int. So this is called as a declaration. So the declaration of a variable informs the compiler about the properties of this variable. So in this case, we are informing the compiler that this is of type integer and this is a global variable. Now, let's say that we are using a function called as func1 and it takes no argument and it returns nothing. So here, this is the declaration of the function and this is a declaration of the variable and we begin our main function and here we are assigning the value to the global variable and this is called as the variable definition and now we are calling func1 when we call func1 it jumps to this location so this contents of func1 is called as the function definition so function definition deals with the coding part or it takes it consumes the real memory whereas the declaration does not consume in any memory and the definition consumes memory in memory. So now after calling this function, it assigns a value and then again it returns back and prints the value. So now let's compile this. So when in this case we have two dot c files, so we have to specify both the dot c files and then the output file that we wish to create. Now we have created uh, output file called globe. Now let's run this. So here if you see, this is a global variable, variable and it has a value 10 and 100. So this is nothing but this is a variable declaration and this is the function declaration. So before using any variables, we have to declare it and in a sense we have to inform the compiler about its properties. And finally, the definition part comes into picture where the real use case is being defined. Thank you. Hello and welcome. In this video session, let us discuss in depth about the different storage classes such as auto, extern and static. The auto variables are also called as local variables and the scope of the auto variables are local to the function in which they are defined. This means the local variables or the auto variables are not visible outside the function and it is accessible only within the function in which it is defined. Whereas the life of a auto variables or when the function is called the local variables are associated with the memory and the memory is defined onto the stack and once the function returns all the stack contents 
of that particular function will be erased and no more the variable will be accessible and the memory associated with that variable is deallocated and the variable does not exist further the next storage class is a uh, extern so extern are associated with the global variables the global variables are used when we have to access these variables across the different c files these are also called as the global variables and the visibility of global variables are across different files and the life of global variable it exists until the program is running in the memory so whenever the global variable is defined it comes into the memory it takes memory and it exists in memory until the program executes and the next type of storage class is static variables so we have to specify the keyword static whereas for global variables extern keyword is used and for auto we do not specify any keyword a static variable the scope of a static variable is visible to the module or the function in which it is defined and whereas the life of a static variable it exists until the program is running in the memory so we can see the static is in combination of the auto variable and the global variable so a static has a feature uh, like it it is visible to the module or function in which it is defined this is similar to the auto variable whereas the life of a static variable it exists until the program is running and this is similar to the feature that is defined in the global variable now in order to understand these concepts more properly let us see the examples now let us open our example of auto variables here this is a sample program which explains the auto variables here we have defined the main function and we have defined one more function called as get area of circle so the main intention of this program is to calculate the area of the circle here inside the main we have defined few variables so these are called as the auto variables because this variables are access accessed only within this function where it is defined whereas in this function called as get area circle we have defined the local variables or the auto var auto variables and float temp area is the local variable and this is accessible or visible only in this function and now let's compile this to understand better now we have successfully compiled this program now let us execute this program if you see here the value of temp area in get area circle is 3.314 so when a main function is called we are calling this function and the execution jumps here and when the execution jumps here we can see that we have a local variable and this local variable is been defined on the stack of this function we will discuss regard the concept regarding stack and different memories in later session when we discuss the memory layout of a program 
so here this is the local variable and the value that is printed from this local variable is displayed here now when it returns from this function this local variable which was present on the stack is being deleted that means this variable does not exist once the function is returned so here we can see that we are next we are displaying the area of the circle with radius 10 is 314 so from this function we have returned temp underscore area and this temp underscore area value has been collected in the local variable area underscore circle so this area underscore circle is visible only in this function whereas this temp underscore area is visible only in this function so now let us do a small experiment to determine this now in this main function we are trying to access the temp underscore area variable which is defined here so now temp underscore area is a local variable which is defined in some other function and we are trying to access this variable in the other function so now let's see what is the compilation we get okay here we we are defining temp area here also and temp area in this function also so now if you run this program we can see the value of temp area in get area circle is 314 whereas value of temp area in main is 10 so if you see here this temp area is a local variable specific to this function whereas this variable temp area is specific to this function so we have on the stack we have the stack area for the main function and we have the stack area for get area circle function and in the stack of the main temp area is stored and on the stack of this function also temp area is stored separately so we have two different set of memory for temp area and we can see that the temp area in this function prints 10 whereas the temp area in this function prints this value which is 3.314 and 10 respectively now let's say that we have removed this temp area from the main now we are trying to access temp area which is not defined in the main function but it is defined in the some other function now let's compile and see its output if you see here it is the compiler is throwing an error and it is saying that temp area is not being declared in main function this means main function does not have any variable called as temp area in its stack hence it throws an error this is the concept of auto variables where the auto variables uh, is limited the scope of the auto variable is limited to the function where it is defined and once the function executes and returns this value is no more present on the memory now let us discuss the external variables now here we have defined two different dot c files let's open them so this is the main dot c and let's open the other dot c file as well so a split is used to split the screen in vi using split we can see two different 
.c files in the same window. So now here you can see this area.c defines the file of area.c and main.c it indicates this contents are of main.c. Now here we can see that the main.c function it calls area underscore circ and the area underscore circ is a function which is defined in area.c and here we can see we have defined a float variable called as area underscore circle and in main dot c we have defined extend float area underscore circle so here this forms the definition where the memory is being consumed and in this dot c file we are informing the compiler that area underscore circle is a variable of type float and by specifying extern we are informing that this variable is a global variable and it is being defined somewhere else and we are just using the same variable and a new memory should not be created so when we execute this the execution begins from main and the main function calls area underscore circ with the value of radius passed to it and here the same area of the circle is being calculated but this function does not return anything whereas it stores the value in the global variable called as area underscore circle and the same variable we are printing it in the main function now let us compile this to understand the output So here star.c implies we are compiling both the .c files that is present here. So if you see here we have these two .c files and we are compiling all the .c files and we are creating an output file called as ext. Now let's run the file output file ext. If you see here the area underscore circle inside function area circle is 314 this is coming from this so area underscore circle is holding a value that is being calculated from here and later we are printing area underscore circle inside function main so this is the print coming from main function and this is coming from area underscore circ function so here from the main function also we are accessing the same global variable and it has the same value hence the global variables are used to share the memory locations across the different files we can see that this global variable is being defined here and we using a keyword extern we are informing the compiler that area underscore circle is a global variable and it will be utilized in this .c file as well so whereas the life of area underscore cir circle will remain until the function executes uh, un sorry until the program executes so once the program exits the all the memory associated with that program also will be deallocated Now let us see the example of static variables. Now let us open these files. So we here we can see that we have two dot c files. One is the main dot c and other is the area dot c. 
here similar to the previous example of global variables we have defined area underscore circle which is a global variable and in order to use this global variable in other file we have defined a extern here and the main function calls the area underscore circ function and in this area underscore circ function we have taken a variable called as int count here let us define this variable with a static keyword so now when we have defined a variable with keyword static this informs the compiler that this variable is local to this function but its life is it exists throughout the program so now let's say that we have called the area underscore circ and passed the value of radius so it jumps to this function and initially the value of count is 0 and it determines the area and it increments the value of count by 1 and it prints the value of count here let us compile this program now let's run this program so if you see here after calling the first area underscore circ the count value is 1 after calling the second area of circ with the count value is 2 and after calling this area circ the count value is 3 so here when we call this function for the first time the count value which was 0 it was incremented to 1 and it was printed here as count equal to 1 now when this same function is called for the second time with the radius changed this jumps to this function the execution jumps to this function and now what happens is this count value is not 0 this count value stores its previous value so in the previous cycle or in the previous call to this function it had hold a value equal to 1 so in this call to the function the new value of the count will be 1 plus 1 equal to 2 so the value of count is 2 will be printed here now next time once again we are calling area underscore circ with a radius of 30 and the execution now jumps to this function area underscore circ and here since it is a static this value will not be initialized but it remembers its previous value which is 2 in this case and now the new value of count will be 2 plus 1 that is 3 so the value of count is 3 will be displayed here now let us make a small correction to this fun function now let us remove this static here now let us see what is the output of the program now let us compile the program and now let us run the program if you see here when we declared a variable as static we had got a incrementing count that is 1 2 and 3 but when we have removed the keyword static we are getting the value of count is 1 the second call also has the value of count 1 and third time also the value of count is 1 so now in this case count is a local variable and whenever a local variable is present as soon as the function returns its memory also is been deleted so for the second time when this function is being called this count 
is being newly initialized in the stack and it has a value 0 and when it executes it has incremented the value to 1 and the same thing is printed here and we can see that any number of time the function is called the value of count is 1 whereas in the previous example we had seen this by defining that variable as a static the life of the variable it remained until the program was running and this variable is accessible only in this function and not outside this function so the scope of a static variable is within the function where it has been defined and the life of the static variable is same as that of the global variable thank you